I've done several videos on Cakewalk by BandLab describing the different type of tracks, channels, buses, auxiliary buses available. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate and show you the basics of surround sound mixing in Cakewalk by BandLab. Before I show you how to set it up, there's one important element in this video that you need to be aware of. Surround sound requires more than two speakers, left and right. Usually, surround sound will have at least four, and most commonly, 5.1 channel. It means six channels. And if you are going to mix in surround sound, you will require at least four or six speakers. The six speakers being front, left and right, rear, left and right, center speaker, and sub speaker. And to be able to drive those speakers, you will require an audio interface that has at least six output channels. Most commonly, you will find audio interfaces that have eight output. An example of audio interfaces would be the Personas Studio 1824 USB, or even the old Personas 1818 VSL, the Focusrite 18i20, and many similar ones. And on a tight budget ones, the Behringer Firepower FCA1616, which I have a whole series of videos on FCA1616. Now that we established the requirements of surround sound, let's create an empty project and I'll show you how to set it up. Now, the question you might ask whether you can still work on a surround sound project even if you don't have any audio interface that supports eight or at least six outputs. The short answer is yes, you can. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to show you how I'm doing it because my audio interface that I'm using to demonstrate and to capture the screen and show you how is my Yamaha AG03 which is a very simple to input to output or stereo input, stereo output audio interface. So you can still work on the project, but you won't be able to hear the surround sound, the rear speakers. To select our surround sound, we just simply go into edit preferences or we press the letter P. And under project surround, we can assign all of the different parameters or channels into physical outputs. But before I go into that, I should mention that there are many other options available, including 2.1, quad, 4.1, and the most common 5.1. 6 and even 8.1 is possible in Cakewalk by BandLab. But let's just keep it simple. Here I can select my left to be my audio interface's left output, and then the right. So if my audio interface support at least six or eight physical outputs, this is where I'll be able to select all the different channels on my audio interface. But for now, I'm going to leave it as it is, left and right. Even though I don't have any output assigned to the center, the low frequency, which is a sub, the left surround and right surround, but I'm still be able to work on the project as a surround sound. Just going to apply and click OK. That concludes the hardware setup in Cakewalk for surround sound. A surround sound project can have one to as many tracks as required, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to create two stereo tracks. I'm going to name them as front and surround. So my front channel will actually have left and right at the front, and my surround track will actually have left and right rear surround sound audio. To enable surround sound routing, we need to actually create a surround sound bus. So let's insert a surround bus. 
you will require at least one surround bus. You can find the bus in our buses section and it's right there at the bottom. And once we create our surround bus, then we can send our tracks. Just open it up a bit. Instead of going to the master, we can send it to the surround. So now, tracks front and track surround, instead of going to our main master bus, they'll be routed to our surround bus, which will direct each track's audio to the appropriate surround sound speakers when we use our surround sound panning. So how do we pan them in the surround sound 360 degree? Well, if we actually look our tracks and channels, you will see that our pan looks completely different. It's not just left and right. It has multiple points. Let me create another track to demonstrate the difference. This is my normal track that's actually going straight to the master. You will actually see that my pan is left and right. But when I select my surround sound assigned track, my panning changes. Let's view our surround panner. So what is a surround pan? This allows you to move the position of the track, whether in stereo or mono track, where in the 360 degree would appear in the surround sound image. So our front track would appear at the front, and when we select the surround track, as indicated right here, surround, and we, sh we can select it here as well, we can move that to the back. And here we can adjust the angle as well from the bottom and the width. And if we have a mono track or even a stereo track, like in this one, let's assign it to this surround. I'm just going to call it ball. And the sound of a bouncing ball, I assume. This one here. Now we can automate and make the ball bounce in every direction in our surround sound image. Or if it's a musical arrangement, then we can actually get our guitarist to go to the back, to the front, into the middle, and anywhere we like them to appear. And finally, let's talk about exporting our project. Cakewalk does support multi-channel exporting to WAV format. And to do that, it's same as exporting any audio project. Here we can select instead of stereo, what would normally be, we can select multi-channel. And we can select the sample rate, the beat depth, the tearing, and so on. And the WAV file itself will have the multiple channel information. Well, now I hope you understand a little bit more about the surround sound capabilities of Cakewalk by BandLab, which not many other DAW support surround sound. And Cakewalk by BandLab being a free DAW, this capability and feature is absolutely amazing. If this video was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. This time in a surround sound. Cheerio, guys.